Reverend Marlo Mitchell, First Lady, Deacon, Deaconess, Missionary, yes. and members of Rising Sun. It is certainly a, a pleasure to be able to stand before you to bring forth a word today. First, I'd just like to say that earthling and family, I have a memory that I'll never leave me. My second visit to your home to visit Mother Thomas, to go see a lady that was frail and lying in a bed of affliction, and I stood there but she reached her hand up and grabbed my hand and prayed for me. <laughs> and it knocked me off my feet. Come on now. Yes. She prayed for me. I was home, broken down, tore down. And I thank God for that. Because that was the only second time I'd ever seen her. Godly woman. And Saul sought him every day, but delivered him, but God delivered him not into his hand. And David saw that Saul was come out of to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness of Zeph in the woods. Psalms 13. David's prayer is, Lord, how long will thou forget me, O Lord? How long will thy hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him, mm -hmm. and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Mm -hmm. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Deliverance comes through prayer getting through. Amen. Deliverance comes from prayer getting through. I've had so much confirmation on this word here. It is a, certainly a word from the Lord because I've got confirmation. I got it all day yesterday. Standing here listening to the testaments at the service yesterday for Mother. Got it this morning. Again, sitting with Pastor. I got it when I thought about Mother Thomas. And as Christians, and at some point in our journey, even before we really knew how to pray, there was those nights that we were just 
where we just cried all night long. Even when we were in consistent prayer, not willing to give up, not willing to give in, but forever going forth, not yielding nor relenting. And even if we only said, oh my God, repeatedly all night long, out of desperation, it was a prayer. Uh, 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 I know that desperate means a feeling showing a sense of hopelessness, alienation, and desperation, a situation that's almost impossible for us to deal with. Uh, 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 this, this, this sermon would be for those who are laymening right now. Uh, for those who might be waiting and struggling in our sorrow. Uh, it's for those who have been in the pothole side of the road for a while. Uh, it's for some of us who have just grown plain weary. Uh, it's also for some of us who have just grown and, and has a taste of bitterness of life and, and just need a little bit of encouragement. In other words, this is a, a word not just for you, but also for me. Uh, this word uh, is born out of a cry of one who is afflicted. Uh, you know who David is. Uh, David is a mere shepherd boy who loves and trusts God. Uh, you remember he killed the life with only a slingshot uh, and a stone. Uh, uh, but now, David is in a desperate strait, and his life is in danger. Uh, but this sermon could have not only uh, come from David, but it, it could apply to Job during his time of torment. Uh, it could apply to Abraham and Sarah in their weariness. Uh, it, 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 it could have applied to the three Hebrew boys. And let's not forget about Dan. And the many, many more that were desperate for deliverance. Yeah. Uh, uh, the temptation to run from danger challenges our very confidence in our God. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that uh, what it feels like uh, uh, collectively, we've, we've said it a thousand times or more. Uh, you know that, uh, uh, that how it feels to have the rug pulled from under you, mm -hmm. uh, to be the target of someone's misery. To experience the pain of undespair deserved. You, you know that the devil taunts you into acting like a bipolar Christian sometimes. Mm -hmm. wow. yeah, These are the experiences of life. Yeah. And there's no silver spoon that will ever save you from them. Mm -hmm. Just stay with me for a moment. Just nudge me a little bit and I promise I won't be long before you. Uh, this morning in our text it seems as though... Daniel is lamenting over his predicament. Mm -hmm. King Saul is out to get him. Mm -hmm. You know the story. King Saul is out to get him. And for fear of him, David has taken up residence in the chilly caverns outside of Jerusalem's in the mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, David, I believe, personally, that he wasn't afraid of Saul. No, David wasn't afraid of Saul. He was afraid that he would, might have to kill his king. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, someone that he was loyal to. Mm -hmm. Someone that he went to battle for. Yeah. Uh, you might recall that the people shouted out upon David's return from battle. Uh, 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 while David killed thousands while Saul killed hundreds. Mm -hmm. And now out of David's weariness. A songwriter's creativity is born from the passions and the pains of his personal experiences. And so this psalmist reaches for his heart and he strums a few chords and he composes this sonata of uh, rhetorical questions that has echoed out through many a centuries as a symphonic uh, salvnic of solution for God's suffering saints. Imagine with me, if you will, uh, uh, David being in a dimly lit cavern uh, as he pens these three stanzas of this symphony in quarry form. Uh, quarry form is in questionable form. There are not 
curious questions, but out of a cavern bound curator seeking to preserve his faith in God. Uh, no, no, this is David. David is desperate for deliverance. Are you feeling David right now? Are you feeling the desperation being alienated, uh, 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 being haunted and wanting to be killed by someone that you worship? Mm -hmm. Someone that you idolize? Someone that you honored? <coughs> hmm. Maybe you yourself have been writing this canopy of literary com compositions or poetic prayers yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you have, this song is for you. Here we have uh, the first stanza of David's symphony asking, How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? Those seem like the words of one who is feeling deserted. Uh, have you uh, ever felt that way? Uh, have you ever felt like the Lord had gone on vacation and left you to fend for yourself? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Maybe you felt that way when you were lost. Yes. Or when you lost a loved one. Or maybe you felt that way when you lost a job and had no savings. Maybe you felt that way when your marriage had begun falling apart. Maybe you felt that way when they began to foreclose on your home. Trouble has a way of sending you to solitary confinement, a state of alienation. It leaves feeling desperately alone. Have you been there? Yes. A man was recounting the days of his youth to a friend. Uh, he, 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 he said, I remember spending a lot of time on the creeks and the rivers with my dad. Uh, we would wade out to the sandbars where, where the water was swift and, and somewhat over my head, but I loved the water, the boy would say. He said, I felt safe because of my father's hands. My father is gone now, but oh, how I miss my father's hands. Come on, come on, yeah. come on. Come on. Even when loneliness seems unshakable, how many of you know that there's still a hand to hold? Yeah. Yeah. This same psalmist who questions this seemingly separation from the Lord later says in verse one th uh, chapter 139, if I take wings in the morning mm -hmm. and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, yeah. even there shall I find a hand to lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Yes, yes. Uh, the second stanza, a David's symphony asks, how long shall I take counsel in my soul? Mm -hmm. Having sorrow in my heart daily, daily, hourly, every minute, mm -hmm. uh, these seem like the words of one who is feeling deserted and now somewhat depressed. Uh, depression is perhaps the worst of all emotions because it becomes and obscures an exit for us. It obscures the exit for us. Even when the solution is right there in front of you, when troubles come our way, the first thing we think is, if only I could be somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Or if I could go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or do something else. That's true. I might not have such a hard time starting over. Mm -hmm. But did you ever notice that when the Lord told the discouraged fishermen mm -hmm. to cast their nets again, mm -hmm. it was on the right in the same place where they have been working all night and caught nothing. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> For most of us, Jesus tells us to use the same old net in the same old pond. He says, try again. Yes. Don't give up. Do what I say. Try again. Yes. That's because he wants us to be, to defeat our enemies rather than to run from them. Yes. He wants us to deal with those old temptations and overcome them. He wants us to face those thoughts and to conquer.
talk to them. He wants us to confront yesterday's trial again and again, today and tomorrow, until our soul finally takes over and says, I can do all things through Christ. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yes. Uh, the third and final stanza of David's symphony to the Lord is, how long? How, 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 how long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Mm -hmm. Those seem like words of one on top of feeling deserted and depressed. Mm -hmm. He is now dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. That's right. He loves the Lord, but he's unhappy right now. Mm -hmm. uh, he feels like he's been left alone. Uh, this symphony now seems to reach its crescendo height of disillusion. Uh, but did you know that great music is born out of affliction? Yeah, that's right. yes, they yes. tell me a lot of songwriters write their best works mm -hmm. yeah. out yes. of affliction. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. They say, oh, R. Kelly got something out right now. 19 minutes long. And he's saying, Maybe you're right. Maybe he's hurting right now. That he's ready to fess up and confess that some of those things that you're saying about me are, are true. I, 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 I've tried not to hold up to it. But God has a way yeah. of working in you yeah. to bring the best out of you. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. That's true. There's a fable that's told of a little piece of wood that was complained that they complained this wood this wood complained bitterly uh why it was being whittled away at cutting it at full you know with holes you got a knife in your constantly there. this little bit of wood is is pain and the owner just kept cutting and as he cut little piece of wood without all of this cutting you would just be an old old stick an uh, ugly stick forever you may think that i'm destroying you but i am actually changing you into a flu mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whose music will comfort sorrowing hearts. Uh, my cutting is making you. My cutting is making you. Uh, are, are you feeling deserted? I mean, are you feeling depressed and dissatisfied? Uh, God is making you. Uh, Malachi 3.3 3 says that, And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. Uh, like the silver, silver smith who heats the silver to remove all imperfection, God is working to perfect your image. And like the silver smith who knows the process is complete, when he can see his own image reflected in the silver, God knows you are complete when he sees your reflection of yeah. his son in you. Yeah, yeah. Amen. When God sees the reflection of his son in you. Who better are you to emulate? Mm -hmm. uh, David's questions aren't over. He, 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 he has sung his three stanzas. Uh, but the symphony is not complete. Uh, the crescendo needs a chorus. Uh, reminding and remembering at the beginning of this message. Uh, I, I said that David was asking three Rhetorical questions. Uh, rhetorical questions are questions that do not need or expect an answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, David didn't need an answer because he already had his answer. And he concludes his symphony with those answers in heartwarming chorus phrase. A praise. At the height of his prayer for God's intervention, mm -hmm. David sings with bold acclaim that he trusts God's mercy and rejoices in his salvation. That, my dear saints, is how we get through trials like yes. the life of trials. We sing God's praises in the midst of our storms and trust his mercy to bring us through. Yeah. Like the Hebrew boys in their fiery furnace, our, our steadfastness is only surpassed by God's grace and God's mercy. We are more than conquerors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know that if our earthly house is a tabernacle where, where it can't possibly dissolve, we have another building. We have a building of God, 
a, a house not made of hands, e, e, eternal in heaven. Uh, uh, that's in uh, 2 Corinthians 5.1. I, I mean, and if you want peace, if you want peace eternally, I mean, like you want it on your job, you, 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 you need it in your home, you, you want it in your church. Peace in your walk and in your talk. And if like that, you are desperate for deliverance. Mm -hmm. And if you're feeling deserted, mm -hmm. I've come to tell you that there's a hand that you can hold. That's right. Mm -hmm. And if you are depressed, Jesus says, cast your net again. Mm -hmm. But this time, trust in me. That's right. Wow. That's right. And if you are delusioned, Remember that with every cut, God is making you. Yeah. He's molding you into the image yeah. of his son, yeah. Jesus Christ. And it's Christ that can turn your tragedies into triumphs. All right. It's Christ that can turn your tears into testimonies. Yes. Yes. It's Christ that can turn your burdens into blessings. Yes. Christ that turns your pain into a praise. Yes. I, I, I'm coming in now. Uh, there, there's a story of a, a young Midwestern lawyer in the 1800s who suffered from such deep depression that his friends were worried about him. Uh, they thought it was best to keep all knives and all razors and all things of harm out of this man's reach. Uh, so they went to his home and removed everything that he might use to take his own life. This man was so overwhelmed that he questioned his life's calling. He questioned his life's calling. He questioned his life's calling. And the prudence of even attempted to follow through. He was giving up, he was giving up, he was giving up. During that critical time in his life, he wrote, I am now the most miserable man living. Whether I shall ever be better, I cannot tell. I awfully forbode, I shall not. These were the words of a young man slipping into deep despair. But somehow, from somewhere, this man reached up and God's right hand held him. Who was this young man? This young man was Abraham Lincoln. Who went on to do great things while being held by the hand of God. Say Moses told Joshua and the Lord, say the Lord will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. When Moses died, God told Joshua, have not I commanded thee? Be strong and be of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. And then David told Solomon, Be strong and be of good courage. Dread not, nor be dismayed. When Hezekiah went against Sibonai, he told Israelites, Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid, nor dismayed. Yes. Isaiah delivered God's message to Israel, saying, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee, and thy right hand of mine is righteousness. And Jesus is saying to you today, Lo, I am with you. I am with you always, even until the far and the furthest ends of the earth. And if you are desperate, and if you are desperate for deliverance, there is a hand that you can hold. And all you need to do is stretch forth yours. Yes. Just stretch forth. Just come to Jesus. The doors of the church are open. Amen. Amen. If you feel alienated, if you feel a moment of despair, unquenchable sorrow, and there's no one there, I've been there. 
before I knew how to pray. I was the one that stayed up all night long and just said, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. I feel the pain of the writer. I said, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. I cried all night long because I was alienated. And I felt hopeless. Never got to the point that I want to take my life, but I just knew that it had to be something better for me. I had to be something better for me because I tried everything and all else. And nothing seemed to help me. No one seemed to be able to take me and help me and pull me through this. But one day, mm -hmm. one day, yeah. mm, come on. something got a hold of me. Yeah. Something came over me. Yeah. Something yeah. new, something yeah. rewarding, something yeah. vitalizing, something that rejuvenated me, refreshed me. Yeah. In my spirit, yeah. God was calling me. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. So the song says, "Nobody can say no to Jesus." Ooh, yes. That's true. That's true. I thank God that I had enough sense not to say no, but I didn't readily say yes. Mm. I kept an open mind. Because I didn't know that much and I needed to know. So I know there's somebody that don't know Jesus Christ in its entirety. Come. You stretch your hand out to him, he'll stretch it out to you. And he'll hold you like you've never been held before. He'll cover you like you've never been held before. He'll secure you like you've never been secured before. Come on. And everything that you think that you want, hope. You want, he can give it to you. Yes. He will provide it for you. That's right. I thank you for this moment to stand before you, proclaim God's word, yeah. and may it be a blessing to you. Amen. 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 Amen.